Hi, my name is Mitch Mitchell, and I got a question for you. Do you believe that there are times where you have to stand up for a cause, even if it might turn out to be controversial for someone? It may sound like a strange question, but in the last month or so, there's been a few things that have happened, and in one of those situations, it has resulted in something that I just think is absolutely disgusting. So, I'm going to start with the other story first. There's some guy online, and I don't remember what his name is, and I really don't want to promote him anyway. And he has a YouTube channel where basically he shows prank videos. For those of you who are my age or somewhat close, prank videos basically say that people go out on the street and they have someone film them doing stupid things, most of the time to other people. In this guy's case, he's been making these videos where it's basically... Okay, I'll say it. It's an assault on women. Like, one of his old videos had him walking up to women, asking them questions, and then all of, all of a sudden kissing them, trying to kiss them on the mouth. Some of them did it, and he showed these videos, but he didn't show a lot of the women who said no or fought or didn't like it. He didn't show any of that. And But this is what he does. So then he came out a couple of weeks ago with some video where he had some kind of fake suit and whatever, and he's talking to women, and next thing you know, he puts his hand underneath his jacket and he squeezes women's behinds and he puts this up there and it, he thinks this is funny well it caused kind of an outcry with a lot of women and one young lady in particular named Lacey Green decided that was it she'd had enough of this guy so she put out a video along with a petition to shut this guy down say you know this is terrible she didn't want the company that was representing him anymore to keep supporting this kind of thing and whatever and she got a little bit of backlash, but you know what she also got? She got tons of support from a lot of big-time YouTube people saying, you know what, you're right. This kind of thing makes us all look bad and people need to stop. Now, this guy decided he was going to try to save himself. He never apologized for any of it. He tried to say it was some kind of social experiment. Yeah, I'm sorry, you had a history already. So the company that was supporting him dropped him. YouTube went in and they basically banned some of the videos that he'd had out there. And now the guy's scrambling, trying to, you know, say, well, he should have the right to do this and that and all these other kinds of things. And, by the way, women have now come out. Some have accused him of assault. One accused him of attempted rape. And it's amazing when you read some of the comments of people saying, well, no one ever said anything before. Well, if they had said something, you probably wouldn't have believed them anyway. And why do I say that? Because of this next story that I'm going to talk about. There's a lady named Anika, or Anita, I'm sorry, Anita Sarkeesian. And she's kind of a big deal in uh, technology. And about a month ago, or maybe it was even two months ago, I don't exactly remember, she came out with something and she was complaining about video games. And her complaint was that video games basically encourage men to basically treat women as sexual objects, and not always in a good way. Some are supposed to slap women around. Some are supposed to try to rape them. I guess some actually have this. And I don't really know because I'm not a video gamer. Uh, I've, I've never... Okay, I got into video games back in the early 80s when it was Asteroids and Space Invaders, but I never got into any of these other games. But I've seen some of the commercials on TV, and I've said, well, boy, that it looks like it's pushing, the, pushing some boundaries. Anyway, she made this statement, and she started to take all kind of heat from all the gamers who were, you know... For those types of games, it's mainly males. You just tell it like it is. Even though a study came out saying 40% of gamers overall are women, not when it comes to these kind of games. So she took a lot of heat for it, including a lot of death threats, to the point that she actually had to leave her home for a while. Now that's bad enough. So this past week, she was supposed to go to a presentation at Utah State University uh, to give a presentation, and someone sent death threats to the people at the university saying not only would they go after her, but they would do a massacre and kill as many people as possible if they didn't cancel her appearance there. Are you crazy? So anyway, they canceled. And why did they cancel? Because Utah has an open permit law. So in other words, they wouldn't, they said, well, we can't screen anybody who comes in because our state allows people to come in with guns. <sighs> so there you go. So I tell these two stories because I'm having a conversation with my wife last night and I happened to mention before the second story uh, this thing about um, people who are trying to stand up for something. And my wife said, 
Well, why would someone put themselves in the line of something like that if they know it could be controversial and it could cause them some kind of grief? Why would they do that? And I said, because sometimes you have to take a stand. I mean, you just have to. You just can't always allow the degenerates of the world to run the world. You can't live under this thing where there's going to be some people who don't like what you say and therefore you can't say it. If you're standing up for a good cause or something that you think is a good cause. I mean, that's just the way life is. Um, my cause, my general cause on this channel is leadership, but it's also diversity. I will talk about a diversity issue of any type, race, sex, whatever, because that's what I do. Now, I don't have hundreds of thousands of people checking me out, although it'd be nice. I don't have that. I have a very small group of people, and most of the people who I think see these videos pretty much know what they're going to get. But you have to stand up for a cause sometimes, or you have to say something every once in a while, and you just have to deal with some of the haters. Now, do I worry about a death threat ever coming against me? No, not really. No, <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. No. Uh, but if one came, I'm sorry, unless it's going to involve other people, I, you know, what am I going to say? Am I not? Am I going to sit back and never say anything that I believe in, or do I, you know, do you allow someone else to control yourself? Now, put this in a work situation. You know, I have during my years uh, when I was a director and even as a consultant, if I see a wrong, I happen to point it out. I will say something in a heartbeat. Luckily, I don't have to do it all that often. But you know what? I have said some things and I have pulled it out. Because a conscientious person, a true leader, isn't necessarily worried about their position if they're in the right. Now, have I always had people agree with me? Heck no. For instance, many years ago, I happened to mention it to this one hospital I was working at and hadn't been there all that long. I said, Geez, how come I never see any black people working here except in housekeeping? And the guy said, well, that's because none ever apply. And I said, well, shouldn't you guys you know, work to the community? There's a significant population here. You don't have anyone locally who could translate for anybody else. He said, well, I don't think that's our job to do. Well, I disagreed. As one of the biggest employers in the area, it was their job to do it. So you know who did it? Me. I actually met some of the people in housekeeping. And I said, you know what? What y'all need to do is you need to go into the community, because I didn't live in that town. I lived over an hour away. I said, and tell people to apply for jobs at this hospital. You know where the job thing is. They said, well, no one ever hires us. That's not the point. The point is I need some people to start applying because we need to prove a point here. They did that. They went into the community. Suddenly there were applications for jobs, and the first one who got hired uh, who was not in housekeeping, I hired the person. As a matter of fact, I hired the first three because one of them didn't work out, other two did, and suddenly other departments started hiring people. That's how it starts sometimes. You have to take a stand. Now, did I risk anything? Well, you know what? I was already a director. I was the only, like I said, non-housekeeping black person working at this hospital, and I could have stayed silent and just worried about myself, but you know, sometimes you have to take a stand. I did that in another hospital uh, in the early 90s. That didn't get anywhere. But, you, you know, if you don't take your stand, if you don't take your shot, then what can you sit back and say? You can complain all day long. There's a lot of people who complain, but there's a lot more people who never do anything, who never say anything to protect the rights of either themselves or others. So that's really the point of this video. It's a question to you, and it's a little bit of motivation to you. The question is, do you ever stand up for someone else's rights? Do you stand up for your own rights? And... The other part of it is, what would it take? I mean, just how far would you allow things to go before you said, you know what, this isn't right, I need to say something. You know, what would you really do? You know, what do you really care enough about in order to say, you know what, this isn't right. I really need to at least say something or do something or take a stand. Let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think this is a true leadership thing? I tend to think so. But let's put it out to y'all. Mitch Mitchell, you let me know. I'll take, you know, you take care. <laughs> I'll see you next time. And by the way, yes, I am in another hotel in San Diego this time. The world traveler, what can I do? Y'all take care.